Hello, good afternoon, and welcome to this presentation on One-Way ANOVA. I'm Dr. Vahid Ariadus from the National Institute of Education. Uh, One-Way ANOVA has a few assumptions. Uh, some of the three main assumptions are these. In different textbooks, you'll find more assumptions, but I think these are the main ones, and I think we need to pay attention to them. Make sure, and make sure that they are satisfied. The first one is the normality of our data. I have discussed this extensively in another video. The second one is the equality or homogeneity of variances for different groups. And finally, uh, the equality or approximate equality of sample sizes, which is also another important finding, uh, another important requirement. But it's important to remember that ANOVA, one way ANOVA, is actually a robust test. So a little bit of violation of uh, these assumptions and requirements might not necessarily uh, jeopardize the validity of your assessment or your test. So today I'm going to use this uh, data set again uh, which has been collected in the core 2016 uh, project in Singapore. But basically the, the uh, test takers in this data set are Singaporean students. What I'm going to do is to look into the effect of stream on two variables, grammar scores and comprehension scores. Grammar and comprehension scores of students who are involved or uh, who are enrolled in these three streams. This, uh, these three streams in Singapore are, are defined as normal technical, normal academic, and express. Uh, I'm not going to explain the differences between these three because it falls outside of the scope of this presentation. Hopefully in another video in the future I will I'll explain more about the educational system in Singapore so you can get a clear idea about it if you're not familiar with Singapore or if you're not Singaporean. All right, so I'm going to just click OK, uh, remembering that I have three levels, therefore I can just run an, an, an ANOVA test, a one-way ANOVA. One-way ANOVA because my, vari my, uh, my independent variable is going to be one. There are two ways of doing this. Uh, one is through the usual uh, compare means menu. If you go all the way down, you can see one-way ANOVA. That's one way. The other one is through GLM, through univariate uh, menu. I'm not going to do this G GLM or general, uh, uh, general linear model. I'm not going to do this. Uh, today or in this video, but certainly in another video I will discuss this because I'm planning to also present uh, factorial designs of factorial ANOVA, that's for example two-way ANOVA and three-way ANOVA, most likely just two-way ANOVA. So I'm going to go up again and uh, choose one-way ANOVA. Uh, this uh, menu pops up. What you need to do is to move your deep uh, dependent variable to this list here. Uh, my dependent variable is grammar score. It just goes up there. It has to be a, uh, a continuous variable like grammar score. And my independent variable, well, sorry, yeah, my independent variable is going to be secondary school stream which is dragged into factor. Now on this menu I have three options. I have contrasts, I have post hoc and I have options. So I'm going to do one thing at a time for this for this part of this uh, this presentation, the, the series of presentations I should say on ANOVA. I'm going to just start with options. In other videos, just follow up videos to this, I will I'll discuss contrasts and post hoc analysis. So options are straightforward. Actually they can give us descriptive statistics, homogeneity of homogeneity test of variance. Uh, and there are two other options here, as you can see. Brown and Forsyth, Forsyth and Welsh. Also, you could choose, you know, means plot if you're interested. I'm not going to choose this because I don't have random effects here. In another video, I'll discuss this. We, well, most often, we don't really need to choose this. So I'm going to choose continue, and that's it. So under the one-way ANOVA, menu I only chose options and that will be it because I think that's just good enough for this presentation so I'm gonna click OK to find out if a grammar is different across the three groups 
which I presented before. So here you are. Descriptive, uh, descriptive statistics are quite straightforward. You've got mean, number, and standard deviation for each of those groups. So let's take a look at the mean score of these three groups. For normal technical, I'm going to double click on this so it will be activated and will become interactive. For mean, uh, for the mean score of normal technical is 5.75 for normal academic we've got 8.08 .08, and for express is 10.54 uh, if you scroll down you can see the same information which has been uh, presented on this graph so it's really a very useful way of visualizing the mean scores or just mean of your sample across the score the, across the groups across your independent variable levels okay so I have explained uh, these concepts in another video how to make sense of standard deviation etc so I'm not going to go through it for this presentation I continue to look at the homogeneity of variances this is an important test and as you remember is uh, one of the major assumptions of ANOVA so what I'm going to look for is uh, basically the statistic, any statistical significance in the results. So the, I, uh, because my sample size is large enough, I'm going to just focus on b uh, the homogeneity of variance, which is a Levine's test, as you can see. Uh, let me just draw it again. Uh, right here, Levine's test, and this is the Levine statistic. That's the Levine's test. Um, so we just look at the SIG, or that's the p-value. If the p-value is greater than 0 0.05, so the two, the variances of, of sorry, the three, not, not two, the, the variances of the three groups or more groups, depending on your independent variable, are equal, or there is no significant difference between the variances of those levels. Therefore, you can go ahead and look at your ANOVA test, right? here. So our between group ANOVA test gives us a degrees of freedom of 2, with the within group uh, test degrees of freedom of 1.1856. Uh, 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 the F value is pretty large. As you see, the F values does not take negative signs, so they always have positives, in, and this is really large. So it, it, it tells us that our uh, P value is significant so what what I would like to do is just double click on this and uh, to double click on this and see uh, well we have a lot of uh, decimal values here that is really significant there is a significant significant difference between those groups now the question is how uh, well between which groups it, this this F test doesn't tell us doesn't give us that information well now you, we need to know whether the difference lies between normal normal technical and normal academic or normal academic and express or express and normal technical now for this we got to do follow-up analysis and that's called post hoc analysis so I'm going to stop this presentation here and uh, I will I will just uh, do right away do we'll do another video on how to do post hoc analysis and how to make sense of them please stay tuned in thank you very much